Hi, and welcome to Agility Robotics. I'm Mitch Bernards, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to operate your digit robot for the first time. If you haven't already had the chance to, I recommend that you take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the digit's operator's manual. This will help you understand our unique hardware and our recommended safety precautions. If you have yet to assemble your digit robot, as ours is shown here, we recommend that you check the link to our assembly video in the description below. But for now, let's get started operating your digit. Before we proceed, we need to clarify the different use cases of the gamepad controller and the e-stop remote. For routine operation, the gamepad controller should be used when you want to shut down the robot. After activating the soft shutdown, the robot will rest itself on the ground in a controlled manner. During normal operation, the e-stop will be used only in two situations. The e-stop will be used to activate the motors before the robot stands up, and the e-stop will be used to deactivate the motors, making the robot safe to approach once the soft shutdown has finished and the robot is resting on the ground. The other use case of the e-stop is to immediately deactivate the motors if an emergency situation arises. If the robot cannot be controlled through the gamepad and needs to be stopped immediately, pressing the stop button will cause the robot to collapse to the floor. Using the e-stop in this manner may damage the robot. Now, let's turn on the e-stop by pressing the small button by the antenna. Verify that the large button on the other side lights up red to confirm operation. We'll now set the e-stop aside to use later. For the next step, we're going to place Digit on its assembly mat in a large workspace. Here we have about 10 feet by 10 feet to work with. You want to lay Digit down on its front with the legs extended as shown, and take the arms and move them to this resting position as shown. This will allow Digit to stand up on its own. We're just going to back drive this arm into the same position. We're now going to turn on the robot. Briefly press the power button and release. The robot is now turned on. As you can see, the LED bar has lit up. The number of lights lit up on the LED bar indicates the state of charge on the robot. In this case, it's probably about a third of the way charged. For the next step, we're going to turn on the robot's controller. And we're going to begin by connecting to the robot's hotspot. Once the hotspot is connected, you're going to open up Chrome and go to the robot interface. The first thing that we're going to check is that the robot's visualization appears correct. Briefly glance at your robot and glance at the visualization, ensuring that the visualization matches the state that the robot is in. Next, we're going to go to the console to check for any warning messages that may occur. The console is for your warning messages. The final step is we are going to request privilege to send commands to the robot. This will enable us to take control of the robot. Now we are going to ensure that Digit is in a safe operating space and is at least two meters away from people. We'll now pick up the e-stop remote and twist the large button counterclockwise, enabling Digit's motors. We're now going to stand the robot by pressing the mode button on the controller. The robot can stand on its own without human help and should be given space to do so. Now that the robot is standing, we can see the two different visualizations of the robot's environment that are present on the controller. The first is a gray obstacle map showing detail further out, and the second is a local terrain map shown in green. We're now going to switch the robot into stand mode, which allows the user to pose the robot and perform basic actions.
We're now going to switch the robot into move mode, which allows the operator to remotely pilot the robot while it avoids perceived obstacles. In the go to mode, the operator can set waypoints for the robot by double tapping on the screen. When the operator presses the A button, the robot will follow the path of waypoints. Now that you have completed the future tutorial, we are going to have Digit rest itself back on the ground. To do this, we are going to change the mode one more time. Now that Digit is resting on the ground, you should click the e-stop button to disable the robot's motors. Now that the robot is resting on the ground, we're going to power it off. Hold the power button until the lights on the light strip turn off. After you've powered off your Digit, we recommend that you shut down and charge your e-stop remote and robot controller. We hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and that you are satisfied with your brand new digit. Thanks for watching.